Welcome to another episode of Fear the Old Lore, where we look at the Japanese and English texts of Bloodborne to gain a better understanding of the lore. Let's begin. Number 1. Henrik was so strong he had a tragically long life. I've seen many people wonder just what it means that the old hunter Henrik had a tragically long life. A more literal interpretation of Henrik's hunter set says that as a hunter, Henrik was so strong he was unable to find a place to die. This likely builds on many warrior tropes in Japanese media where Henrik was in search of a strong enough opponent to give him an honorable death in battle, but he was so strong no one was able to do so. At the very least, it helps explain why he's such a tough enemy to face even with the aid of Eileen the Crow. Number 2. Beasts are no longer human. If one is familiar with werewolf mythology, it probably doesn't come as a surprise to learn that the beasts prowling Yarnum were once human. Before encountering characters like Father Gascoigne, Vicar Amelia, and Jura, there is another item which tells us the beasts were once people. The English version of the Hunter Act states, No matter their past, beasts are no more than beasts. But the Japanese is a bit more explicit in stating, Whatever their origin, beasts are no longer man. While subtle, the difference is interesting because it establishes from the very beginning of the game that the beasts were once human, and it could take away some of the impact in seeing Father Gascoigne's transformation. The translation team may have wanted to play up the dramatic impact of such a revelation, so the English description of the axe does a good job preserving the tone of the original, yet increasing the impact of the reveal. But if beasts are no longer human, does this mean that the people of Yarnum have no way of returning to their original forms even if the Night of the Hunt comes to an end? Is their transformation so severe they are beyond salvation? Perhaps only a fool would try to save a man after he's turned into a beast, which brings us to our next point. Number 3. The Old Hunter Jura is Foolish Because He's Tender-Hearted There's a small difference in the Japanese version of the Grey Wolf set which emphasizes that Jura is a fool because he's tender-hearted. If the Hunter's Axe description is true in saying that the beasts are no longer man, then it reinforces Jura's foolishness in sympathizing with the beasts of Old Yarnum in abandoning the hunt. Number 4. Thick Cold Blood Isn't Literally Thick I've seen a few theories in the lore community that the more blood echoes the blood has, the thicker it becomes. It's fairly natural to assume that based on the description, but thick in this instance is closer to rich or dense in meaning, so the thicker the cold blood, the more densely packed it is with blood echoes. Number 5. The Blood Starved Beast is Bloodthirsty In Japanese, the Blood Starved Beast is called Chini Koaita Kemono, which literally reads as the Bloodthirsty Beast, or Beast Thirsty for Blood. Since bloodthirsty can easily be confused with bloodlust, calling it bloodstarved does a good job conveying its thirst or hunger for blood. Internally, the bloodstarved beast is called the self-flagellated beast, and supplemental materials specify that it ripped the skin off its own back to drink its own blood. There may also be a play on words in its Japanese name, since thirsty and dry can be pronounced the same way. The localizers choosing to go with bloodstarved beast does a nice job of conveying that it both desires and is deprived of blood. Number 6. Successive Blood Vial Infusions Recall the First This one is pretty straightforward. Some have wondered what exactly it means in the blood vial description where it says, Once a patient has had their blood ministered, a unique but common treatment in Yarnum, successive infusions recall the first and are all the more invigorating for it. The Japanese for it is closer to, Those who received the peculiar medicinal blood of Yarnum thereafter gain a sensation of life power from the same kind of blood transfusions. So Yarnumites are literally pursuing a high on life when they drink the blood. Number 7. The Troubling Origin of the Cannon The cannon says it was a prototype firearm fashioned by the powder kegs, yet the Japanese and Korean descriptions state it was a prototype developed by the Healing Church Workshop. One might expect the cannon to then be found in the Healing Church category of the storage system, but it's listed in the workshop category instead. Is it because it was a prototype that it couldn't truly be considered a Healing Church weapon? Or is it possible at one point in development it was associated with the powder kegs whose weapons fall under the default workshop category? It's difficult to say for sure, as the cannon matches the powder keg's fondness for flashy explosions as well as the healing church workshops need to develop weapons against larger foes. Number 8. Third Umbilical Cords Aren't Precursors Third Umbilical Cords are amongst one of the most cryptic items in the entire game due to the ambiguity with the language used for them. While the English says, every great one has this precursor to the umbilical cord, the term precursor doesn't appear anywhere in the Japanese text. Instead, 
This description may be closer to a great relic also known by another name, I-cord. Only infants have them, even in great ones. Calling it an umbilical cord comes from that. The important bit of information is that third umbilical cords are found in infant great ones, which is why they're called umbilical cords. Since these umbilical cords are also known as I-cords, it may be possible that the two terms are interchangeable, and instead of just being third umbilical cords, they could also be understood as third I-cords. Unfortunately, third in this instance doesn't describe eyes. It describes the cord itself as a kind of thin cylindrical object, so a more appropriate way to think of it may be that it's a third cord of eyes. I really wish it could have worked out as an indirect confirmation that consuming the third cord produces a third or inner eye within the hunter. It's still possible, but it's left ambiguous, and without direct confirmation, it may be a belief better suited to headcanon. To quickly address some confusion pertaining to its name, while it's called the third of umbilical cord in the North American version of the game, third is meant to be used as an ordinal number, or part of a sequence like in first, second, and third. It's not meant as a fraction, and in the other English regions of the game, it's properly called the third umbilical cord. Number 9. Master Willow may have been familiar with carol runes. The final line of the Rune Workshop tool states, Provost Willow would have been proud of Carol's runes, as they do not rely upon blood in any measure, which makes it sound as though Willem was unfamiliar with Carol or Carol runes, since he would have been proud of them. The Japanese is a bit more ambiguous and says, Not relying upon blood is something that is close to Headmaster Willem's ideals. There is still the possibility Willem may not have known about Carol runes, but those claims are weakened by him already having the eye rune. If Carol runes are close to his ideals, he may have thought they'd lead to an alternate path to attain evolution without relying upon blood. Number 10. Where does milkweed come from? In real life, milkweeds are an important food source for bees, wasps, and butterflies. With Ebriatus being a genus of butterfly, many have wondered if the statue of the Rom-like creature in the Altar of Despair meant to be a kind of cocoon in the life cycle of a great one like Abritus. Since celestial emissaries and living failures seem to be attending to plants, some have wondered if the milkweed rune ties into that and nourishes great ones. For what it's worth, the term milkweed doesn't exist in the Japanese text. Instead, it's called naidoko, or seedbed. Seedbeds are used in gardening as controlled environments to grow plants and protect them from adverse weather conditions, weeds, and insects. The term comes up a few times in the Soulsborne games, with it being used for the various references to the bed of chaos in Dark Souls 1, the seedbed in the Cleric Blue set in Dark Souls 3, and the garden portion of the Garden of Eyes in Bloodborne. By becoming a milkweed, the hunter becomes a seedbed that can cradle phantasms within it. While the English variant of the Cause Parasite says it stimulates the phantasms of a lumen wood, the Japanese says it stimulates the phantasms of a seedbed, making an explicit connection between the weapon and the rune. Number 11. The Executioner set isn't the basis of all healing church attire. This isn't necessarily a mistranslation, but the second paragraph in the Executioner set reads, Later became the basis for all church attire with its heavy draping of holy shawl. Depending how it's read, it could be saying that the Executioner set was the basis of all church attire or later church attire. The Japanese implies the latter, and it should be understood that the set became the basis of later church attire. This information becomes relevant when trying to fit the Executioners into the timeline and whether or not Ludwig was one. Since the Executioners came later, we can infer that Ludwig's garments are probably more related to the Tomb Prospecting set, and contrary to some beliefs, he was not an Executioner. It's more likely Martyr Logarius and the Executioners were inspired by Ludwig's ability to set aside his fears and concerns in the hunt, and it's why they believed acts of goodness are not always wise, and acts of evil are not always foolish, but regardless, they shall always strive to be good. They were merely emulating the way Ludwig was guided by his holy moonlight. Numbers 12 through 15. Regional differences in localization. Despite being localized in the same language, there are some surprising differences in the English used for the North American version of the game compared to the English for the other regions. There's a fantastic page on the Bloodborne Wiki that's compiled these regional differences that's definitely worth checking out. For example, the Kirkhammer, Ludwig's Rifle, Madman's Garb, and the Tearstone all have a number of differences between them. Let's begin with the Kirkhammer, comparing the two English descriptions to the Japanese. Here's the North American version of the Kirkhammer. Kirkhammer, a trick weapon typically used by healing church hunters. On the one side, an easily handled silver sword, 
On the other, a giant obtuse stone weapon characterized by a blunt strike and extreme force of impact. Their church takes a heavy-handed, merciless stance toward the Plague of Beasts, an irony not lost upon the wielders of this most symbolic weapon. The European version's final paragraph differs, saying, Trick hunter weapons forged in the Healing Church workshop, said to be hidden somewhere in the Grand Cathedral, were made to the tenets of a rival school of craftsmanship. And a more literal rendering of the corresponding Japanese would be closer to, the Healing Church Workshop, one of 200 trick weapon factions, was once said to have been inconspicuously somewhere in Cathedral Ward. The European version is closer to the Japanese, and there's a high likelihood that the game's text continued to be revised close to the game's deadline, so the localizers may not have had enough time to implement those changes to each region. Before continuing, I'd also like to bring some attention to the name of the Kirkhammer. It's essentially just called the Stone Hammer of the Church in Japanese, and it definitely comes across a bit awkwardly in English, so I think the localizers did a brilliant job of calling it the Kirkhammer, since the etymology of Kirk comes from church in Middle English. It preserves the meaning of the original while adding to the overall atmosphere of the game, arguably more so than the Japanese. Next we have Ludwig's Rifle. The North American version states, A rifle typically used by healing church hunters. It is said that this rifle was employed by Ludwig, the first hunter of the church. Its long, heavy barrel makes up in range for what it lacks in reload speed. Ludwig's rifle exhibits several departures from the workshop's design, suggesting that the church anticipated much larger and human beasts. And the final paragraph differs in the European version again with, The healing church workshop began with Ludwig and departed from old Garmin's techniques to provide hunters with the means to hunt more terrifying beasts, and perhaps things still worse. However, this paragraph matches the final paragraph found in both regions' version of Ludwig's Holy Blade. The Healing Church Workshop began with Ludwig, and departed from Old Garmin's techniques to provide hunters with the means to hunt more terrifying beasts, and perhaps things still worse. Thanks to people like Into This World, aka David Christie, who's compiled the text for different versions of the game onto his lore translation guide on game FAQs, we can see that in earlier builds of the game, the final paragraph of Ludwig's Holy Blade is the same as the retail version of Ludwig's Rifle. It seems the European version of the game's description was properly updated, but that change wasn't reflected in the North American version of the game. In a twist of fate, the European version of the Madman's Garb description is the same as the rest of the Madman set, but the North American version has a unique paragraph. Instead of, Truth oft resembles madness, inaccessible to the dull of mind, those who go mad are merely thoughtful souls who fail to reach any conclusions. The garb says, The appendages draped across them are said to be a kind of protective charm, or at least, that is what these lost souls believe with all their hearts. This aligns more closely to the Japanese, so it's interesting seeing which versions of the game are closer to each other. Lastly, the final line in the North American version of the Tear Stone isn't present at all in the European or Japanese versions of the item. A doll sheds neither blood nor tears, and thus its nature remains unknown. Whoever thinks this is precious must be troubled by severe naivete. As a content creator, I think it's important to be upfront and admit when you've made a mistake, and I feel as though I have a duty to myself and to my viewers to address and correct them when they happen. So in my video about the true story of Bloodborne, I claim that the note that appears after killing Rom is in brackets and is being spoken aloud. Unfortunately, it turns out this isn't true. When looking back at the Japanese footage of the game, I noticed that the note isn't put into brackets, but the material I'd been pulling the text from did have it in brackets for some reason. Ultimately, it is my fault for not double-checking my work, so for that I apologize. However, even though the note itself isn't in brackets, I do think since we can't find it lying on the ground afterward, it's still implied that the hunter is hearing it being spoken, so I stand by my overall interpretation of events related to it. So once again, I do apologize for giving out some false information. And so, to clarify another point, I realized after making the first video about 20 insightful differences in the Japanese translation of Bloodborne, that I might have ended up stressing that Jura was an old hunter in the sense of the DLC a bit too strongly, and I failed to bring up that Henrik was also called an old hunter. So the term did exist before the DLC, but Jura was treated uh, differently for some reason. So hopefully uh, clarifying this point now will make it a bit clearer. Hopefully these differences are insightful in understanding the lore of Bloodborne or some of the challenges faced in translation. 
It's a difficult task localizing from one language to another, and even when something is translated technically correctly, it can still be interpreted differently in its target language than the translators may have intended. As a final disclaimer, I'd like to say for the vast majority of Soulsborne content the translations are fine. As they say, the nail that sticks out gets hammered down, and it's easy to develop a kind of bias against those that stand out. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider liking, subscribing, or even joining my channel for more Soulsborne related content in the future. And remember, fear the old lore.